Welcome back to the Tapes Archive podcast, where we release interviews that have never been heard before. Please listen to episode 000, an introduction for the full backstory about this podcast series. On this episode, we have the original politically incorrect TV show host and comedian, Bill Maher. At the time of this interview in 1994, Marr was 38 years old and out promoting both a new book, True Story, and the third season of his TV show, Politically Incorrect. In the interview, Bill talks about how he helped two ex-felons become buddies via his show, the love of guns in the United States, and how he feels the Republican Party has been hijacked by the far right wing. As always, we have music critic Mark Allen at the helm conducting the interview. Before we get to the interview, we have a couple of housekeeping items. If you would like to support the show, please go over to the website at thetapesarchive.com and click on the support button. On there, you'll find many ways to show your support for the show, and all of them are free. While on the website, check out Mark's blog for more context of this interview and for some personal insight from Mark himself. One last thing, the Tapes Archive podcast is a proud member of the Osiris Podcast Network, a global community connecting passionate fans with podcasts and experiences about artists and topics you love. Thanks for tuning in, and now it's time to open the vault. Hello. Hi, it's Bill. Yeah. It's Mark Allen. Yes. Hi, are you expecting me? Uh, I am. Let me get rid of uh, all these people. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? Oh, we're a little swamped. Yeah, okay. Well, I promised uh, the, the outfit no, no, 20 not, minutes, so... I'm uh, not giving you the bums rush. Okay. I'm just saying, you know, we go on the air Monday. It's our new season, so, so it's like crunch week. Well, I'm glad you're not giving me the bums rush, because I've spent enough time watching this show that you owe me some time here. Okay. okay. <laughs> we we'll start up by asking you, if the personality of, uh, that we see of, of you on the show, is that pretty much you? I mean, uh, or are you just... just sometimes you... you go a little further to gauge a react or to get a reaction out of the guests. Well, I think anytime anybody's a performer, when you're on camera, you probably heighten everything a little bit. I mean, if you're not, if you don't get up for a show, then you don't, you know, shouldn't be in the business. But, but yeah, I mean, basically, I mean, you know, when you're on television that much, you can't hide. So it's silly to like present yourself as something you're not. I mean, I never, for example, take a position or, you know, any opinion is a, is a true opinion of mine. Okay. Any, any, uh, I mean, I, I'm not acting. It's not a spoof of a talk show or, you no, know, I, I reckon yeah, that. no, I know, but uh, some people ask me that and, um, no, I would say it's pretty much me just, you know, probably a little more animated cause, cause we're on, but pretty much that's, uh, I think you're smart in the business if you graft your so-called TV personality onto your real personality instead of trying to do it the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I just wondered if you were ever like the devil's advocate and just went a little further on your opinion just to elicit a response. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. But I think I do that in life, too. I think I enjoy being a provocateur. Well, I've been watching the, the show uh, since since I moved to a place that gets Comedy Central um, right. in, in February. And uh, let me, let me uh, this is the little profile of you. This is the way I would describe you. You tell me if, if I'm hitting it right, okay? Uh, you're a disillusioned Democrat. You like Perot's ideas, but you knew he could never get them carried out, so you probably held your nose and voted for Clinton. You think government is too intrusive. You think people are too, too dependent on government. You think people have gotten fat, lazy, and I'm willing to accept responsibility and sometimes you feel like your father for saying that and you feel the same way every time you mention that rap has no melody how's that that's uh that's pretty damn good good okay uh the only thing i would change is that i i don't i didn't feel like i had to hold my nose to vote for clinton uh i like him Huh. Oh, well, that's a, that's a bit of a surprise because I, I think, and, uh, sometimes I think you're fairly hard on him. But, I mean, that's which is fine. Sometimes you know? he he needs to be hard on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and sometimes he has a hard on. But okay. he, uh, um, you know, my uh, take on Clinton is that he is like. Uh, are you a baseball fan? Yes. Okay, he's like a, a shortstop that gets to more balls, and so he makes more errors. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like <laughs> Ozzie Smith usually has more errors than lesser shortstop, but that's because he has a much wider range. If you don't get to a ball, you're not going to ever make an error on it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, th I just think he, he tries a lot. I mean, the headline in the uh, New York Times yesterday was, health care, president's greatest goal, dead on the <laughs> <laughs> it just made it look like down in defeat, president's highest order, dead, down, gone. Well, yes, of course. I mean, that's what happened. But uh, I think that the way the, the, the political system works is that 
you almost had to accept that the first try was going to go down in defeat. But that's why it's a first try. And uh, I think before his term is out, he'll he'll get a health care reform bill. But, you know, yeah, he got an error on that one. He and, he and did he handle it the right way? No, I don't think he did. I don't think he handled it very well. But there's a learning curve in every job. I mean, you can imagine what the learning curve in, the, in that job must be. Uh, at least he's, I think, smart enough to probably learn from the mistakes and do it better next time. I mean, he should have gotten more bipartisan support, and he shouldn't have tried to do a lot of the ways he did it. But, you know, he did, and he'll come back. And, he does come back. you got to give him that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, and, and I'm glad that you compared him to a shortstop as opposed to a box of chocolates, because if I hear a box of chocolates, another one. Why? What is that? Oh, from Forrest Gump. You know, oh, life is like right. a bad box of chocolates. Exactly. And like, oh, man, I don't want to right. hear it. it. You know, it, it's interesting to me in watching the show, uh, and I, I wonder if you have the same reaction that, Republicans seem to, or the conservatives and the Republicans who are on the show seem to be completely aligned behind their people, and the Democrats seem to be willing to take more shots at, at a guy like Clinton. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's always. I mean, you know, that's Will Rogers' very line. I don't. I don't belong to any organized party. I'm a Democrat. Yeah, it also seems there that there are so much more. They have so much more of a unified agenda. We did an issue the first season about how. The Democrats just have like an issue du jour, and uh, I mean that's just the nature of the party. I mean that's that's why the Republicans, with a registration of way less than what the Democrats have. I mean the the Democratic Party is the registered Democrats in this country have always been overwhelming. So at sometimes as much as two to one over Republicans, and, and but the Republicans were able to capture the White House so many times because of one of the rules of party politics, which is a small but rapid and well-organized group, can defeat a less organized, larger group. <laughs> I mean, you even see that within the party. I mean, the, the, the Republican Party has now the the problem of being hijacked by the far right wing, because they are the most organized, the most fervid, the most rabid. The other thing you, you said in uh, that little description about the disillusioned Democrat reminded me, the thing I always say is, uh, I'd love to be a Republican if only they would, <laughs> you know. And what I mean by that is, if they, if, they, if, you're, if their platform is, as they say, getting the, the deficit under control, well then explain to me Ronald Reagan because he's the one who really jacked up this deficit. Right. So don't give me that bullshit. <laughs> and if and if the Republican Party is the party that says, get the government off the backs of the people, but in a woman's uterus, that's an okay place. You're gonna get them off their back. You know, I mean. <laughs> How can you be off the go off the people's backs, but making decisions about what goes on inside their bodies? Um, it's those kind of contradictions. Well, both political parties, I think, want to be in your pants. The Democrats want to be in your wallet, and the Republicans want to be in your zipper. And that's right. why I've always chosen right, to right. be a Democrat. I, I can give up the money. Um, Going to the new format for an hour, was it? Did you feel like it was a matter of needing more time to explore issues? Actually, we're not. It's we're not on for an hour, but we are on um, a lot more. We are going to be on every night at ten o'clock. I thought it said that it was going for an hour. That uh, might be a false thing that sometimes. Oh gets no! Out. Okay, I've misread this. And then okay, sorry. So good. Okay, well, it's yeah. a half hour. Good. Okay. A half hour, but. Uh, but we'll, we will have, uh, you know, four new shows every week, whereas last year we only had one new show a week. Tuesday through Friday are new shows. Oh, that would be great. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah it will be. It will give us a chance to do a lot of things that we weren't able to do before. Such as? Well, I mean, little comedy bits, as opposed to just you know, last year we did, uh, yeah, it's very often we did a, a, what we call a, the, a modest proposal at the end, All right. uh, which we'll still do that. But we were able to, we can do a few other things. We'll just have more time each week all right so forget the hour thing now let's talk about uh, some of the guests um have really surprised me in in their weirdness sometimes <laughs> and um you mean the pairing yeah well not no not the pairings just the, the the personalities because you never get to see people talk like that right and it's you really have no idea what they're like i mean you know ed asner uh, i always thought had a right. reputation for being a very smart very liberal guy yeah. and when he did that show with tim allen and i forget who else was right. on it uh right. i thought you know? uh, was that the same show okay yeah, yeah. Uh, they, that was in l.a so yeah quentin was on with us in l.a right I remember but and i just thought boy Ed Asner did 
not come across very well, and I don't know if it's, uh, I don't know what that is. So I'm curious about about your reaction to some of these people and uh, uh, guests who surprise you uh, politically, or, or uh, who do better than you thought, or do worse than you thought. Well, I mean, that uh, part of the pleasure is just that is the surprise. Hmm. Um, I mean, for us, the pleasure is the mixing. I mean, uh, Quentin Tarantino was on, as a matter of fact, was not on that show, because I remember he was on with Dick Clark, which is exactly the kind of pairing that, that just makes us giggle, because it's just so wrong. Right. You know, I mean, we, to put Dick Clark on with Quentin Tarantino, we had on uh, John Waters with Senator Arlen Specter. <clears throat> that just can't be right. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, we had on uh, G. Gordon Liddy with, with uh, Harvey Firestein. I mean, that, that's the first joke, is that, you know, who, who, who these pairings are. Right. Um, after that, yes, some pe sometimes people absolutely do surprise you that, that like you say, you think that they're more liberal and they're conservative or are they the other way around. We, we purposely don't pre-interview anybody. I mean, we purposely do not run this like any other talk show because it's not, a, you know, it's not like any other show. It's not an interview. We're not plugging anything. We're ha actually having people just talk about stuff. So I don't, I don't really want to know too much before we go out there. I don't want to lose that you know, spontaneity, and I, I just want it to be just like, I mean, the idea is that it's a it's a cocktail party, and you certainly wouldn't uh, free interview to go to a cocktail party. Right. Do the, you, your life is a little overproduced. <laughs> yeah. Do the uh, do the guests uh, know in advance what the topics are going to be? <laughs> um, very, very vaguely, yes. Okay. If they want to know, we will tell them. So you're, so when the, you're um, bringing up the, the topic, they're hearing it basically for the first time. But. They're hearing, they're certainly hearing, uh, anything detailed about it and if I have a position on it they're certainly hearing that for the first time if they want to know what we're going to be talking about on Monday's show we'll tell them O.J. Simpson but that's it we won't tell them anything more about what, what the specific questions are or the baseball strike or you know stuff I mean just really very vague sort of uh, general stuff and if it's a topic that's a little more abstruse we will actually send them an article on it I remember Rita Rudner was on one show and I walked into makeup and she said I haven't had this much homework since I was in sixth grade <laughs> I guess we had to know what the topics were but I guess she reads it for a bunch of articles and you know Rita is of course so meticulous that she mm -hmm. of course had to read everything um, what, what did you think of Quentin Tar Tarantino did you know him uh, before? Well, no, but he's <laughs> he's a very big fan of the show. So, I mean, that made me love him already. Uh -huh. And I was a huge fan of his work. He was great. I mean, we thought he would be, and he was. He's, he's really out of control. Now he is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we wanted him for the first week here, and he wanted to do it, but he's just... I mean, his, he is just too much in demand. He, uh, he's out plugging his movie and a million other things, and I don't think he's going to make it the first week. But I know he will whenever he can. I don't, and I don't think anybody ever talks to Roseanne the way you talk to her. Is that because you know her real well? I do know her real well. And, uh, I and remember I you being on the show, the, being the photographer on uh, her show, that, that episode. So. Oh, right, right, right. I did. That was just... Uh, I mean, she just called me because she... I guess she wanted someone around that week to play with <laughs> um, and I was around but yeah I mean you know Roseanne is not a, I mean she's a lot of nutty things but she's not a prima donna I mean she she, she you know you don't have to walk on eggshells with her she enjoys a frank exchange mm -hmm. on stage and off well, it just seems like everything else you read about her is uh, about people being afraid of her, and right. you talk to her just, well, you know. <laughs> I don't blame people being afraid of her. Yeah. Uh, I mean, she asked me years ago if I wanted to write for her for her sitcom, and I said, Roseanne, we both know if I did that, we wouldn't be friends for long, so let's, <laughs> let's shelve that idea right now. And, and actually, the guy, one of the guys I think who comes off best on the panels all the time is Larry Miller. I, I think, love Larry. Yes. Well, Larry and I really go back a long way. Yeah, who does just a great, uh, who is really smart as as well as being funny yeah, about exactly. things. And, and, right. I mean, he's exactly what we love on the show. I mean, he's he's uh, first of all, there is a chemistry that you have with old friends that you just can't have with with people who are not old friends. I mean, that's not to say that you can't have a wonderful chemistry with someone you just met, and sometimes that can be just as good and just as interesting. But it's just not, I mean, there's no, uh, there's no replacement for that kind of feel that you have for someone that you've known for 15 years and have been clowning around with like that for 15 years, who you have been sparring with verbally for 15 years. There's just a sort of a 
It's like a band. It's like the Rolling Stones. I mean, they've been playing together this long. It's why they're this good. I mean, they just know where the, each other one is going just by intuition or something. Whatever it is, I don't know. But, you know, that's why I love to have the Seinfelds and the Millers and the people like that who are my old cronies. That, that to me, is the most fun. Are there people you want to have on who won't come on? Oh, yeah, yeah. done millions. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just wonder if there's anybody in particular who you've really pursued. Oh, I'm sure there's, uh, I mean, there's lists and lists and lists. I don't have them in front of me. <laughs> the thing is that the, the lists are always shrinking because, uh, you know, now, I mean, as opposed to, like, when we first went on, it was really hard booking because everyone was like, what? What kind of show is this? I mean, they had no idea what was going on. I mean, now not only is our show on, but there's a bunch of ripoff shows either on or coming on. So, I mean, people have gotten the idea that this is a... And also, everybody knows this show now. I mean, we have plenty of people call, calling us up and saying, hey, could I get on? Which is great. And and you don't have to explain the show. And if by chance there's someone who hasn't seen the show, which we don't find very often, we can send them tapes. We can send them whoever it is. We can say, I mean, if we want to get a senator, he says, well, I don't know. Well, we'll send him a tape of Senator Specter. I mean, you know, you can't get a much more establishment figure than that. And the other thing is, uh, like uh, Michael Moore, who did uh, TV Nation, had a, a quote in uh, Newsday a few weeks ago saying that when he went down to Washington, he said, we, we were able to get any politician we wanted because they all thought that our show was like politically incorrect and they all knew this show and uh, they all thought this was the way to sort of, you know, look look to their constituents like they had a sense of humor. Once we established that we were not any sort of a gotcha show, which we are not and never will be, then the politicians were more willing to come on. Now, you know, is Teddy Kennedy ever going to come on? I doubt it. I doubt if Teddy Kennedy ever wants to appear on anything called Comedy Central because he just is obviously gun shy. He's, so, he's such an easy target. I mean, what he doesn't know, and maybe somebody will explain it to him at some point, is that I would never, ever make fun of him. I mean, I sat there with Mary and Barry uh, in January in Washington, and he's three times he was talking about how we need to have a, a you know a new morality and a moral reinvigoration. And I never said, excuse me, Mr. Mayor, but weren't you the guy smoking crack in a hotel room? Somebody else on the panel may have said that, but you know, I will never. I mean, I'm always the, the show should be uh, a lot of heated funny debate, but it should never be, in my view, cheap or uh, less than gracious. Uh, what kind of mail do you get for the show? I'm amazed at the mail I get for the show. First of all, the sheer volume of it. It must be like everybody who ever watches the show wrote me a letter, yeah. which I love, which is great. I answer, you know, I read every piece of mail and I write a little note at the bottom of the, I mean, we do have a form letter but then I always write something at the bottom. And uh, I mean, some of it is just, a lot of it is just make the show an hour. That's a very, very common one I get. It's too short, make it an hour. A lot of it is just, hey, keep up the good work. Occasionally there's uh, you fascist pig or you liberal asshole. Uh, and a lot of times there's a lot of people who just want to take one issue <laughs> you know, <there's, laughs> I have a special file for the ones that start out. Bill, I thought you were a smart guy. <laughs> <laughs> I used to think you were a smart guy, but, you know, I mean, because you're always going to say something that somebody thinks is crazy. But uh, generally, it's uh, it's very, very positive. That's good. Um, I think the best part of the show the modest proposals. I mean, uh, I enjoy the, the uh, that, but I always think, you know, you really do some great provocative things in there. And I thought there was one, and I think it was a modest proposal, where you said the, that there should be a warning on the Bible not to be taken right. internally. Man, I thought, oh, with the mail he's going to get for this should really be unbelievable. Yeah, you know, I didn't get too much on that. That's <laughs> I've got much more on things like gun control. I mean, you, you really learn what the hot button issues are. Guns is a real big one. People in this country just love their guns. Yeah, which uh, it's true, and, and I live in a very conservative state, so I I'm, I'm get more of that than, than most people yeah. do. Yeah, I mean, you just you say anything, and I wasn't even, I mean, it was really such a tongue-in-cheek thing we did, I mean, as, as most of those modest proposals are, that the bit was just, we were saying, you can have a gun, but since the Second Amendment was written in 1776, <laughs> it should be a musket. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> But yeah. there are people who are upset about it. Um, okay, and let's talk about the book for a bit. Um, it, it's funny. There are some real funny parts. I'm about halfway through it right now, and, uh, and at, at times I'm also reading it and thinking, this is like trying to relate a, uh, a funny stoned experience to somebody who wasn't there. Huh. So I don't know what kind of reaction have you gotten, and, and, and talk a bit about what you were trying to, to accomplish. Well, I mean, the reaction has been great. I uh, sounds immodest, but it ha I mean, I haven't had uh, 
any uh, anything but uh, good notices and um, the people who uh, there's different categories there's people who are who I know who've read the book and call me there are people who stop me on the street and have read the book and tell me what they think and then there's reviews I mean my goals were that or were one uh, a book that would be uh, certainly as funny as any novel anybody would ever read and two to uh, for once accurately portray this life of the comedian that I don't think anybody had ever sort of accurately portrayed for the for the world at large. I mean, I think it's a subject people are really curious about. So, you, do you think the comics are, are are horny, irresponsible, smarter than average people? Basically, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think that's only part of it. I mean, I yeah. think there's a lot more to it. I think that there's also a great... I mean, there's a lot of positive things that they do that uh, it's easy to, to read it and, and only, you know, in any in any book. I mean, the juicy parts are the things that are probably more negative. But, I mean, I mean, I hope I capture the, uh, the camaraderie, too, the fact that these guys, they stick together. I mean, they... Uh, I mean, they don't at some times, but, uh, but they... They certainly have the urge to. I mean, there's there's certainly a love among them that I, I mean, I remember that unfortunately, you know, a lot of us from the old days, we're all sort of have uh, gotten our wish, which is to have nice flourishing careers, but for that reason, we never see each other or rarely see each other. I mean, I mean, there was a time when we all were every night hanging out in that diner and every night hanging out in the clubs, and it was just really a lot of fun and now our lives I guess are better but I don't know if they're, if they're more fun than that I mean those days certainly seemed like they were uh, there was less, certainly less pressure and I mean if you could hang out in the nightclub all night and just you know hang out all day and go to movies we, we really we thought we had the world by the balls even though we were only making $50 a night um, do the other uh, four people in this book know who they are? well I mean, they're really composite. I mean, all the characters are composite of uh, different people, and uh, I guess it would be a, a better answer that would sell more books if I were to say, you know, wink, wink, this guy is Jerry Seinfeld and this guy. But it's not. I mean, it's just not. They're, they're really based on comic personas more than just specific people. A little bit more about the show. Do, do people stick around and continue talking after the show ever? Or they talk during the commercials, too, and I have to shut them up because, I mean, they, they it's like I always say, hey, shut up, shut up. Especially if we're, if we're on to a topic that is going to have to be continued after the break, but they get so going about it that just because we went to commercial, they want to keep making their point. And, and I have to, like, say, please, 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 if you have to talk to each other, talk about the weather until we're back on the air. And yes, very often they do after the show uh, continue talking, or you know, some people have forged friendships. Uh, Mayor Barry and, and Liddy uh, got to know each other from uh, being on the show together and wound up taking a walk through the ghetto that they had planned, and they, they bonded over being in the same prison. And <laughs> it's uh, awfully nice when you can bring ex-felons together like that. It makes you feel so much better about your yeah. life. Uh, now, have people gotten really pissed off at each other? I mean, uh, ever come to fisticuffs or anything like that? No. No? Okay. <laughs> Well, you know, it's it's the 90s. You yeah. think that would happen. So. Uh, no, I'm hoping. <laughs> that would be great. It would make nice footage for uh, for talk soup or whatever. Yeah. Uh, there seemed to be some doubt that that or, or question of whether you'd come back and do it again. Was there a question about? Uh, well, I mean, uh, I think the network always wanted it, and uh, I wanted to continue to do this show. The, the truth is that. Other networks are not ready for this show. Everybody knows it would be better if we were on a, 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 a network that got into every single home in America. But the truth is that you have to make decisions in this world, and it's much better, I, for me anyway, it's much better to do the show I want on a smaller network than to do a show I don't want on a bigger network. Uh, did people propose a different version of the show for you, you know, maybe with singing and dancing or something yeah. like that? From day one, this network has let me do exactly the show I wanted and never, ever once said one word to me about how to do it. And, and that, for that, I will always be immensely grateful. And, and I realize how rare that is, how lucky I am. And so I, I really don't want to blow a good thing. Okay. And uh, just a couple, uh, one or two other things personally. Are you married? Not to my knowledge. No. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, well, they, they reran the Valentine's Day one yesterday, and uh, my wife and I were getting a big kick out of the uh, uh, the modest proposal of Bachelor Day. Bachelor Day. Yeah, it wasn't going over big in our house, but... Uh, <laughs> I know, I have a feeling that that's probably uh, common. Other than uh, than comedy and, and the TV, do you do, you do things... Uh, uh, I mean, you said you were a baseball fan, I guess. Are there other things that you do uh, hobby-wise, entertainment-wise, that would... Uh, they get you away from comedy? Since I've started to do, I mean, since I've been doing this show, I have not had time really for much of a of a life. Also this year, I've also had a sort of a moonlighting job as Jay Leno's uh, remote correspondent, which sort of like added just enough work so that I really never got out. It's funny, this business is like that. I mean, either, either you're too idle or you're too busy. That, that There's no middle speed to show business. Doing uh, the Leno stuff that you do, does that preclude you from doing any Letterman things? Pretty much. I have a contract with NBC. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> that, that would that. probably take a dim view if I did Letterman. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be a bit of a slap in the face. Yeah. Are, are you watching Letterman uh, at all? Um, I, I mean, I, yeah. I mean, I, at 11.30, if I'm home, I'll uh, take a look at what, uh, what those... Everybody's doing. And how do you like uh, the new show compared with uh, Late Night? I don't mean Conan O'Brien show. I mean how Letterman has changed since uh, going over to CBS. I don't think he's changed that much. I think the show that's changed in the last six months is Jay's show the last year. I mean, I think Jay is just doing a lot better. I mean, I think Jay's really finding himself and I've really been happy to be a, a big part of that show this year because I sensed it was a show that was that was growing and finding itself and it was also nice to be with him and be a part of that I mean I've known him a long time and I know he's he's, he's experienced some tough times there I mean there was a while when they were in the press conference where he said hey you know we're What's everybody cheering about? I just didn't get fired. That's all. That, you know, I mean, when Letterman, you know, when they wanted to get Letterman back. And then there was like, I mean, this whole year has been like Letterman, Letterman. I mean, the Olympics and the whole fucking thing. I mean, it was just Dave's year. Mm -hmm. And Jay just sat there and weathered it. And, you know, in ratings, he wasn't exactly getting killed. He wasn't winning. But finally, last week, he won a week. And I'm sure he's thrilled about that because the truth is that the show has come a long way. And it's a, it's a good show now. And uh, people who are snobby about, oh, no, I never see that. I watch one of it. Well, you know, I always say to them, really? Well, watch Jay one night. Give it a chance. See what you think. All right. I will. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I must admit, you know, I watch Letterman because I think, because I like the edge of Letterman. I mean, Jay, I, I, I've talked to him a few times and, and just seems like a very nice guy. And I always thought he was a very funny stand-up comic. But the niceness just went over the top for me watching Right. Well, show. I think that's, that, see, that's one thing that I think you'll find has changed a little bit. I think he's a little more of the real Jay, which which is more of an edge. Listen, i got to go to okay. a meeting. All right. That's great. I appreciate your time. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for listening to the Tapes Archive podcast. Please remember you can always find more information about the show and the individual episodes at our website, thetapesarchive.com. Until next time, the vault is closed.